Hello fellow Chartists and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am the Uncle Chartist. A little throwback there. Okay guys, so we got a false breakout setup on the S&P 500. Uncle Chartist has been saying below 421 is a false breakout setup would be very bearish, okay? All right, I wrote in my Discord here, the plan was puts when support fails, all right? First support's at 417 and if it fails, 415, 413, uh, 412 gap fill as targets okay so the plan was simple in my discord it was to look for puts when 417 fail okay because you can look at the 15 minute chart here spy opened around 417 ish uh 17.5 cents and went as high as 417.23 cents but it did break down and it pushed all the way down through my levels chopped around 415 but remember you got to understand the difference between price rejection or or price exception okay or in this case uh we was not looking for a rejection we was looking for a bounce all right like a pennywise bounce you guys watched the pennywise movie where the pennywise was really bouncy and as you can see it just based it just based so it's kind of like a hot stove rejection only for the bowl side where it touches support you want to see a strong reaction bouncing to the upside instead spy just based around 415 giving us weak you know upside movement weak downside movement just chopping that's a, a an example of price exception versus price rejection does that make sense guys it shows that price is accepted and basing on the support like that is bearish it just tells us that we're just burning through this to, through the demand zone and eventually breaking down it's the same thing when you, when you go into the upside when you see price basing below resistant it's built building strength to to um, break out to the upside Okay, so this in this case, we're looking at it from the bear side. And as you can see, worked out very well and it pushed all the way down. It went as low as 412.40 ish, 40 cents off my 412 target. Okay, not too bad. I'm not a fortune teller, guys. All right, so that was the setup I gave us. And it was a little bit challenging because I said in the last video, below 421, look for puts. But when you get a gap down like that, in the future, you guys got to remember where the next support and where the next resistance is relative to where the SPY opens. So in this case, even though we had a gap down below 421, the next support that we know of was 417 with 416.5 below it. Okay? All right. So I'm going to take a look at the six-hour chart here, okay? You can see this, six, this triangle pattern that I spoke to you guys about last week. All right? I even made uh, an act, a five-minute video dedicated to this triangle pattern. Because I, I say the market goes through two phases. It's either going to chop or base or it's going to go in a one directional move. So when it bases, it comes in many forms. It comes into a choppy channel. It can come in as a bull flag, bear flag, you know, pennants. In this case, we had a pennant or a triangle pattern and it broke down. Once we broke out of it, we got the one directional move to the downside. Okay, that's the evidence right in front of you guys. So what's the next setup? Let's start with... Uh, the bullish setup. I want you guys to notice this six hour chart, but the RSI is very uh, oversold. I have not seen the six hour chart RSI this oversold since July 14th. Now, if we go back to July 14th, it was looking very bearish at that time as well. But the next day on July 15th, it recaptured a very critical resistant level, which triggered more upside. So for tomorrow, like I always tell you guys, the same thing has to happen tomorrow where we need to see a resistant level clear because Uncle Charter's strategy is when a resistant clears, that's when we look to long. And the big critical resistance tomorrow is 415 that I got, okay? That's that pink line right here. You can see it's been tested as a resistant and a support. Clear 415 would put 416.6s, give it to a zone 416.6 to 417. All right, that's the next resistant. If that clears, 418.5 is in play. That's the 23.6 retracement level. If I do my FIB level for March 2020 to uh, January 2022 high, I get my FIB level at the 23.6 retracement level at 418.5. So that's a very critical level that bulls need to recapture. And of course, above that, gap fill as well at 421. That's my 50% retracement level. As long as we are below 421, bulls are in control. We are in false breakout mode. We can possibly back test that level as a resistant, and I will be playing it unbiasedly level to level. But all I'm saying to you guys, as long as 421, 
uh, bears are in control. So if SPY does decide to, t to do the bullish scenario and take out these resistance level, I would probably try uh, uh, put direct at 421 for the back test and go strategy. Okay, the concept behind that. I made a video about it. Videos link in description below. Okay, now like I said, we got to clear some resistance level starting with 415 to trigger more upside. However, bearish scenario is this: we have the level at 4. 13 that's this yellow line right here that i got all right i'll make it a little thicker 413 fails uh the next level that i got is around 410 uh 412 is actually i don't have it on my chart for some weird reason but around there if i scroll up a little bit you can see i got it there's a gap over there around uh 411.6s to 412 all right so i'll put that as royal blue Okay, so below 413, I got this gap fill zone around 411.7 is to 412. If that fails, I got another critical zone around 410 to 409.3 ish. Okay, based on previous lows, all right, previous demand zones, that's the next one. Below that, I got a level around 418.5 ish, and then the very critical one at 407. That is my 38.2 retracement level from January 2022 high to June 2022 low. Okay, guys? So 413 fails tomorrow. Below 413, I got the gap fill around 411.7 to 412, 410 is to 409 zone, 48.5, and then the critical one, 38.2 retracement at 407. Okay, guys? So you guys got my levels. You got my setups. Do the best you can tomorrow. Good luck. I use the 15-minute chart to execute these trades, okay? If you need more you want more content, definitely consider joining Uncle's Discord channel, all right? Now, here is Triple Q. Triple Q gave us a very nice trade. And you can see this orange trend line that I got, all right? Connected all the way from December of last year. Connecting that high to January 4th high to March 29th high, April 4th high. Got plenty of touches on this trend line, okay? And also August 4th high. So we finally broke out of it back in August 10th. But today, look what happened. False breakout scenario it was around 318 below 318 i was very bearish i mentioned you guys in the last video and it was alerted in the group today and it came down and smashed the 315.5 support level and it closed below that so bulls need to recapture 315.5 and especially this level around 317 now needs to get back up and break out of that trend line once again as long as we're below 317 and 315.5 ish False breakout setup continues. All right, next support is around 311.7, 308.5, and then 304. Okay, those are some nice moves, juicy moves to the downside. All right, Tesla. Tesla's pretty much in chop mode if we look at this, right? We got the this white line, critical level 858, and then we got double top all the way up here around 941-ish. Okay, so it's pretty much chopping. Got a lot of Tesla 858. You know, recapture all that happy stuff. Also, another test of it today. So, double top and then a bunch of bottoms over here. Okay, not the bottom, but a bunch of uh bottoms, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's pretty much the chop zone for me. Okay, it's a big range, you can still trade it. But if we are to break out or break down in this range, Tesla needs to drop below 858 to put 842 in play and, and more downside. Okay. Uh, the resistance I got, first resistance I got is at 878, 887. And then I got the 200-day moving average around. It's now at 902, okay? And then above that would be 923.5, 931.5, and then 941. Above 941, we break out of the chop zone, and this double top is canceled, okay? But we do got a double top, so if we lose 858 tomorrow, that will be a very good sign to start shorting to the downside. Okay, guys, so we're going to end this off with option flow. I was looking at the dark flow, the dark pools. Dark pool has been really great, guys, but I'm going to cover option flow. All right, here is the SPY. Filter it for 500K premium, and it's extremely bearish. Look at this, 9.3 million inputs, October 21st expiration date. Over 11,000 size, all right? This one, 5,000 size, 4 .1. We still got a lot of big ones towards the beginning of the day as well now like i always say we use these options for we got to combine it with the price action and with the price action so bearish i'm thinking there these big money are legit bearish betting to the downside but we still gotta let the price action guide us all right so big money very bearish on spy 
Triple Q. Big money's very bears on Triple Q. 93% in the puts in Tesla. Yep, big money's pretty bearish on Tesla as well. 61% in the puts. All right, guys. So that's what I have for you guys today. If you guys want to be part of a profitable trading community with lots of support, please consider joining my Discord. All right, guys. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you guys so much for your support. Peace.